go. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Phil Brunel, a.k.a. Darkside Phil here. And I'm doing something very special tonight, something that was completely unplanned, something that's off the cuff, on the fly. The reason I'm doing this is because in the past couple of days, the internet at large has finally kind of turned an eye to me for the first time in a major way in a long time in an actual positive light. Now, this video in stream is not going to be about that, all right? I'm not going to be talking about how this other guy, this other content creator completely screwed up his life by doing messed up stuff. And basically, I had two pretty epic looking tweets that, yes, one of them was directly to him and one wasn't. It was more indirect, but two epic tweets that kind of went crazy on Twitter, one of which has like 6,000 likes, one has like over 17,000 likes, and major content creators, including guys like Hee Hee Productions and PewDiePie, uh, amongst others, have been like referencing me. Boogie said that it was his favorite tweet ever. Um, this is the first time in years that anyone has really come out and said anything positive about me. Because sadly, as you guys and gals know, if you are longtime fans of mine, um, there's a lot of bullshit and slander and all kinds of crap uh, about me all over the internet. All right? People are like, it's, I guess it's not hee-hee productions. They say it some other way. I have no idea how they say it. I, I never saw it before. I'm just saying big content creators, all right, have been referencing me in a good light. And I'm like, this is a great opportunity because I've got over 2,000 new Twitter followers. I've got hundreds of new followers on my YouTube channel. I know people are going to be coming out to check out streams. Um, and if they don't see that, you know, I basically take this opportunity to do something positive and kind of almost clear my name for the last seven years of slander that's been against me on YouTube in particular, but of course now it's all over the internet, I almost feel that sadly, all right, that sadly there's no, not going to be another opportunity to do it. Because the thing is, there's so much crap that's said and done about me all the time, and yes, every once in a while on a stream or in a video, I can kind of denounce it and tell you the real story behind it, but the funny thing is that some of these things I've talked about at length in the past, and... People just don't know. Oh, well, Phil addressed it. Well, we ignore the fact that he addressed it, and we just say that it's still a fact. I'm like, but no, I actually talked about this two, three, four years ago. I explained the whole situation from start to finish, and people are still like, well, it didn't happen, right? So the purpose of tonight's stream and tonight's video here is to basically take a lot of those things that common things, misconceptions about me, slanderous statements, memes, things about dark side Phil that have been said over the last seven years and kind of try to at least denounce them, debunk them, or at least tell you the truth about that situation. Now, you don't have to believe me, and the bottom line is there will be thousands of people out there that probably will never believe me no matter what I say and do anyway. There's nothing I can do about that, but at least I think this is a good place to start for those who are now maybe, oh, I heard about Dark Side Phil, he made these epic tweets, but now we hear negative stuff about him. This will finally be my opportunity to kind of clear the air about all that stuff and kind of start a clean slate almost, because really that's what I've wanted. In the past two years, I've become a full-time live streamer rather than a YouTuber. That is my focus, and that's what I want to do. And it's hard when you have all this baggage from the past that's dragging along with you. And no matter how much you try to shake it and change for the better, you still have people who drag you down with all that shit, okay? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to be doing is going down a list. I actually have a list of things here that I want to address live on the stream tonight. And hopefully, you know, going through all of this stuff uh, will be enough to kind of clear the air with a lot of things and at least we'll be at square one, at least for some of you. Like I said, I know some people will never convince, but who cares, right? Also, this is honestly going to be a, a, almost like a weight off of me because I, like I said, I usually never talk or address about this stuff, address this stuff, excuse me. And for me to finally be able to get it off my chest to talk about some of this stuff publicly is going to be a good thing. Now, a few things. Number one, I will be accepting, you know, contributions during the stream as usual. Cheering, subbing, and tipping will all be allowed and everything. And I will periodically be updating the leaderboard with things like top tier, top cheer, top tip, etc. Um, however, I'm not going to be entertaining troll cheers, so things coming in, you know, that are completely insults. No, I'm not going to be taking that. Um, and also, uh, in, in regards to uh, just in general, you know, I want to be able to, to focus in on what I'm talking about. So understand that maybe you guys will be contributing. You'll expect a shout out. I'll try to squeeze it in. But that's really not the main purpose of this stream. It's really just to clear the air about a lot of things, okay? So, for example, DJ Atomica did a 200-bit cheer. That made him the top cheerer so far of the stream tonight, and I want to get him up on the leaderboard here, okay? And I got a dollar tip from Jack who says, What's your advice for trolls? Don't let the trolls get you down. 
Um, the advice for the trolls, I mean, move on at this point. You know what I mean? Like, I can understand. Here's the thing, and this is the truth of the matter. I'm saying I'm going to debunk seven years of slander, right? For seven years, I've been the butt of the internet's joke because of the way that I used to act seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. When I started on YouTube, I was a very obstinate, opinionated asshole who didn't want to think outside of my own realm of very narrow perspective, and I didn't want to walk in another person's shoes or see things from another perspective. And I would regularly, at the, the dawn of when I really had my highest popularity um, on YouTube, all right, I was an asshole. I'll openly admit that. I used to go out and say, oh, screw everyone who plays Minecraft. They're a bunch of immature idiots. Who the hell would ever want to play Minecraft, right? That's so ignorant. That's stupid. Um, you know what I mean? Why would I say that? But that's dumb shit I used to do. Oh, my God. Screw Hideo Kojima. He makes terrible games. I would say stuff like that. And people would take it as, like, serious shit. And they would then hate on me. And they would make tons of videos about me. And they would hate me for that. And then, over the years, different things happened. Like, the this is how you don't play movement. Where people would take my gameplay and unfairly honestly edited together to only show moments where I really sucked or I was doing stupid shit in a game and I was just you know talking out of my ass and those would go viral on YouTube and sadly that would now make people think that like there's no valid content that I put out there when in reality that was a skewed perspective now it was a true perspective the things that were in those videos were taken right out of my videos it wasn't like people were adding stuff in that wasn't in the videos but taking stuff out of perspective of an entire playthrough makes you look bad right so really it was 2012 when those style of videos, those this is how you don't play videos and all that started. And you know what? At the time, I was so angry about it. And the truth of the matter is, these days, I don't give a shit. People can do whatever they want with my footage. I don't want... Obviously, I, I would like people to get permission first or whatever. But it's apparent YouTube's never going to do anything about it. People are going to be able to make these, these, these nasty negative montages about me no matter what they want to do, right? Um... But the bottom line is this, is that since then, since the This Is How You Don't Play movement got popular, now what people have done, oh, well, Phil's an easy target. We now know from the This Is How You Don't Play movement he's got no defense for himself. So now we're going to go a step further. Instead of only doing things that are going to be related to his gameplay, now we're going to take things out of his personal life that he reveals and we're going to skew them, we're going to lie about them, and we're going to make him look like a real scumbag to the face of the internet by saying all kinds of crazy shit that really has no factual basis. And the bottom line is most of the really nasty things that have ever been said about me never had any factual basis. They were taken out of something that was skewed or something that had no actual concrete evidence, but people just believe it because it's been said so many times. And I'm not a person who's going to sit here on a stream and just talk about the negative shit constantly because I want to be a positive guy. I want to put out fun gameplay. I want to cover the new releases. I want to have cool throwback sessions. I don't want to my, my entire existence on the internet to be defending myself against people who are just saying ridiculous stuff. So I usually just hold back and never say anything. But tonight is the exception where I'm striking back. I finally feel like because there's at least a positive vibe around Dark Side Phil for the first time in some seven fucking years on the internet, that finally today I can kind of come out and say, here's the truth about all this crap. You don't have to believe it, but at least I kind of have some groundwork here to finally say something about it, okay? So a few shoutouts, a few more shoutouts. Kenja... Timmy, $5. Exposed detractors and all those lies they've been repeating over and over. That's a $5 tip. Thank you, Kenja. In fact, I'll get your name up. I forgot to put... Poor, poor Jack30. I apologize. I didn't put your name up earlier. I'm all worked and fired up here tonight. <laughs> I am. Um, Xbox One is garbage. Tip me a dollar. Said, Phil, I'm fucked up. Laughing my ass off. Well, try not to do anything silly. Um, Reggie Phase 420 Tip me $4. Said, Phil, longtime viewer. I, I like MK11 Online Battles. Keep up the awesome streams and great content I've enjoyed for five years. Detractors are cucks. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie, for the $4 tip. Cali Kid, $9.51. Um, just took me $5. He said, this is all I wanted to hear. We talked on Twitter the other night, and I said, I'm glad that you can poke fun at yourself, and now for me, that's all I wanted. There's a large majority of us who get tired of you being pompous. Honestly, at this point, I don't see a reason to be pompous. I don't. I, I seriously don't believe that I'm any better than anyone else, or that my content's any better than anyone else. I've always said this. I can't believe that at one point ever in my my existence on the internet, someone wanted to meet me in person and shake my hand and get an autograph. That like, it blows my mind. I don't think I've ever done anything that's warranted anyone to even want that. But it's true, right? Um, Alexander Ross, he cheered. He says 913 viewers in the stream just started. Wow. See, I don't. I'm not. I don't look at viewership. It's another thing. I don't look at viewership on my streams. So I have no idea how many people are on the stream right now. Chocolate Fuzz, Timmy, $5. And some of y'all need to take a few moments to realize how much joy DSP has brought to us and how sad it'll be with the day that he's finally gone. There'll be a day when DSP is no more. It will be very sad. Some of y'all need to think about that. Much love, DSP. Thank you, Chocolate Fuzz. So 
That's G's. That's 5, 10, 14. Uh, hold on. 15. That's about 20 bucks, I would say. So we'll say we're around $21 in tips. I apologize I didn't necessarily add that. I want to get started with the with the, the, the video. Um, shout out to A Goff one who has resubscribed for three months. It says, what's up? What's up, A Goff? All right, here's the deal. We got to get started, all right? I could do shout outs all night. And I would love to do shout outs all night to people who are being supportive, but I want to get started, all right? So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, all right? The one thing that I want to say is off limits here tonight, because this is the very truth is things that is private information about other people that I can't reveal. So, oh my God, I want secret behind the scenes dish on what happened with your ex-girlfriend. I can't do that. I can't do that because sadly, you know, that's, that's private information. That's not just me. That's someone else too. I want information about your wife. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. That's, that's unfair to someone else who's not here, who is not part of this, uh, to give information like this. And the thing is, yes, the, sadly, the slander over the years, has come into my life with my personal relationships, my family and everything. All this has been affected by these people who say nasty shit about me all the time. Um, but what I will do tonight, will directly address as much as I can without revealing personal information that would be risky or unfair to other people. Fair enough? All right. So the first thing we're going to start with, Styles K did 100-bit cheer, by the way. Thank you very much, Styles K. Uh, the first thing I want to start with, all right, is looking at a long, long, long time ago. Back before I ever live streamed, back before I ever did any direct capture, way back when, all right? Um, I used to make racial jokes, okay? I did, I used to make racial jokes. Now, the racial jokes that I made, I used to call myself an equal opportunity offender, meaning I would make a joke about one culture or race and then another culture or race. But I would also make a joke about my own culture. You know, I'm Polish and Italian, and I would make those kind of jokes during gameplay as well. And, you know, what people will do over the years, they'll take clips out of context, all right? And they will put a clip out there completely out of context of a playthrough and make one little, this is one joke Phil made in 2010. Look at what a horrible racist he is, right? The bottom line is, and this is the truth of the matter, in my lifetime... I've had more friends that were not white than white because I actually grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, which was a city that as I was growing up became more and more multicultural. My elementary school, my high school always had a multicultural group. My best friend when I was growing up was Puerto Rican. Um, I had you know African-American friends. I had uh, friends from all different Asian cultures, Indian, Laotian. Um, oh man, what was Van Arak? Vietnamese. Um... You know, I've had friends of every nationality in my life, okay? But people will always take one th little thing out of context or whatever and say that I'm a racist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest, and I will admit this to this, now I will publicly say this, one of the biggest mistakes that I actually feel that I made in my early career as a content creator is that I was making Nazi jokes, all right? They're not funny. I Now I know that. But the thing is, I used to be a very adamant listener to the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern, as you guys know, if you listen to him, is a very risque guy and he does very risque things. And he used to do segments on his show where someone would impersonate a Nazi. And he would say ridiculous things that would be over the top. And, oh my God, but the joke was that it's not a real Nazi. It's a guy impersonating a Nazi and personally doing over the top stuff that we all agree is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you don't know, Howard Stern is Jewish. So for him to have Nazi jokes on his show kind of makes sense. I'm not Jewish. For me to make stupid Nazi jokes in videos that I've done and stuff, it's not smart. It's dumb. It's incredibly fucking stupid. And at least I'm proud to say I haven't made a joke like that in nine years, okay? But people will still bring it up to this day and say that Phil is a racist and Phil is totally, you know, he hates the Jews. Did you ever see that video that he made where he was playing the Dead Space 2 uh, demo and he was pretending to be Isaac Himmler, the last uh, the last remaining Nazi, and saying that because the Jews ran rampant across the universe, that they infected the whole universe with a necrovirus, and he wants to turn on the ovens and burn all the Jews. It actually happened. I, I, I you know, I'll always fess up to that. It's, it's out there public on the internet. You can't hide it. It's something very incredibly stupid that I did. But it was actually a, a video based on the exact shtick that was done on the Howard Stern Show. I, some of the things I actually say in that video are literally lifted from the Howard Stern Show, copy-pasted into my video, okay? 
Now, what's funny is, some people actually to this day will say that stuff's funny. I, I don't think it is. I don't. I don't anymore. Back then, I was more immature. Like I said, I, I you know, Howard Stern and everything all being in, in line with that stuff. I used to think that that stuff was funny. All right. I don't think it is um, anymore. I've grown up. I've matured. I'm not that kind of person anymore. But at that time, I thought that it was funny. Now, here's the thing. That that actually got me banned off of a, a website that was not YouTube. It got me banned off of a website called Blip.TV. You may have heard of them. It's a business that existed back then. And what happened was I had been doing YouTube videos from 2008 to 2010 as a hobby. I had never made a dime doing it. I had never monetized any videos. Well... I wanted to monetize my videos because I got laid off. I've been working at an office job for almost five years. And I got laid off out of nowhere unexpectedly. And the under I was kind of the underdog of the internet because people supported me. They loved my YouTube videos at that point and really wanted to see me succeed. Okay. And so what ended up happening was I went to Blip TV and I started uploading my videos there because on Blip you could monetize your gameplay videos. You couldn't do that on YouTube back then in 2010 unless you had a specialized partnership with a third-party company. So I went to Blip, and within one month of me uploading these my gameplay videos to Blip, I was making good money, and actually I was the second-ranked guy on the fucking website under the Nostalgia Critic. The Nostalgia Critic was number one, I was number two within a month, which was pretty insane. Um, but what ended up happening was I put out that video, that Dead Space 2 demo video with that kind of jokes and commentary in it, and what happened was my trolls, which I've always had trolls, even back then when I was white hot popular, I had trolls. My trolls staged a campaign, which they later admitted publicly was a fake campaign. They mass emailed Blip TV, pretending to be hundreds of upset people, saying, how dare you have someone on your site who's making this kind of comedy and kind of, kind of commentary and stuff like that. Um, okay. And it sucks because, you know, they got, they got me. You know, Blip TV management saw these hundreds of complaints. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. They watched the video. They're like, okay, get rid of them. And they kicked me off the site, all right? It sucks. I was I was banned from Blip TV because of troll activities. The bottom line was the thing I got banned for is pretty heinous. I agree jokes about Nazis and shit is not funny. I, at that point in my life, nine years ago, was very immature and thought that it was. And thought that I, I emulate Howard Stern, I should be all right. But... Obviously, it's wrong. And the thing is, now, in 2019, I could come out and say, my God, that's so stupid. Why did I do that? But that's something always that people try to say. Phil was a racist. Phil always used to do videos that were racist content and stuff. No. In fact, it was a rarity when I did stuff like that. That's why it was funny. And every once in a while, I would go out of control and do stuff like that. But now, in the modern era, I confess up to it and tell you guys I'm not like that anymore. I realize how stupid and, and dumb that shit was. You know, it's kind of similar where people say Phil used to always be over-sexualized. It's true. I used to be very over-sexualized when I was starting up videos on YouTube back in the day 10 years ago. It was all about getting that teen audience to watch you. So talking about the size of the tits on that girl and, you know, sex joke here and there, nipple here, you know, all that stuff was very popular back then. But now I don't do it anymore. I phased it out of my content. It's hilarious because I, I now do video game playthroughs regularly every day on Twitch. And people in the stream chat will make sexual comments about things going on. And I don't. I ignore it. I stay away from it. So, I feel that I've changed for the better. My, my regular viewers tell me that I've changed for the better. But yet, there's still this sl slander out there that I'm still a racist and a sexist and I do all this nasty stuff. Now, also, going in line with going way back when. Ladies and gentlemen, um, in 2012, I made public my relationship with a, a woman at that time who was my girlfriend. Okay? And she very much became a part of my content over a five-year span that I was involved with, with this woman. She went by Pandali on the internet. That was her, her, her nickname or whatever. And there's always been lies and slander and complete horrific nonsense regarding my relationship with Pandali, which is horseshit. And the thing is, it's in my past. I mean, I, we haven't been together in over two years. I now have a, a married to a beautiful, lovely woman named Kat. And my life is great. But the thing is, people to this day still fucking bring up this bullshit. So tonight... For the first time ever, I'm debunking this bullshit, all right? The first thing that everyone fucking says to me is that, Phil, you first met Panda Lee when she was underage. She was under the age of 18. When you first started talking to her, you were grooming her so that you would finally go out with her and all this shit. And all of that is complete and utter fucking bullshit nonsense false. The truth of the matter is that back then, this was a different era, all right? It really was. It was a different era of YouTube. Um... 
And back then, people used to use YouTube private messaging. I don't, no one even uses that anymore. Pre sending me a private message on YouTube. I, I haven't even looked at a YouTube private message in a great part of five years. I'm not even exaggerating. Okay. Um, so, she actually, as a fan, a viewer, private messaged me on my DSP gaming channel. I believe the very first date was that it was like like November of... 2011 November of 2011 okay and I didn't know who she was basically she was just someone friendly as someone who I had talked to back and forth via messaging for about two months and then after that we wanted to start talking a little bit more so we started texting each other and you know it just grew from there and then we dated on and off from the year of 2012 I say probably mid, or early to mid 2012 all the way through 2014 when eventually she moved in with me as we moved across the country out here to the state of Washington and she lived with me from 2014 until early 2017 when we broke up, okay? Um, and during that period of time, we had highs and lows and one of the misconceptions that everyone tells me is that, oh, Phil, you, you, you she was underage when you started talking to her and, and dating her and doing stuff with her behind the scenes and you're a pedophile and all this crazy shit. It's all bullshit. And the thing is, if anyone actually had a fucking brain in their head who said this, they would do the math and figure it out. She's always made public her birthdays. She would do social media posts. Sometimes there were videos about her birthday. Like, this was a common thing that would happen is that you would know that she was, her birthday's in late August. And she was 18 years old the first time I ever even spoke to her in a YouTube message. I never knew her before she, when she was underage and never even heard of her. This is, it's ludicrous that people would just make this shit up and try to slander me and shit like that because they want to hurt me, basically. But no, the truth of the matter is, I never, ever spoke with, with her until she was 18 years old. She messaged me, not the other way, she messaged me on YouTube when she was 18, and we talked for months, and then eventually we started dating for a while until it got more serious years later, like I said, and then we moved in together in 2014. So, you know, in reality... It's, the thing is, where's the evidence? There's no evidence of anything here of what any people have said about this because it doesn't exist. It's not true. You can look up publicly and find out, what, you know, when her her birthday is. That was always public information. And if you do the math, you see, what you know, when we started dating, she was 18. Late, when, we, she, when we moved in, she was 20. She turned 21 later that year. We celebrated her 21st birthday at a restaurant. She had a drink out for the first time. So it's ludicrous bullshit. Now, one thing I will publicly admit is that we had a very big age gap. I was roughly just under 11 years older than her. And honestly, at first, the relationship was great and it didn't work out. I honestly will tell you to this day because I think we were too much of an age gap apart. She had ideas of what she wanted to do with her life and stuff that I was far past that. I wanted to have a more settled life where we're just kind of settled in, in, in a home and it's an adult life. You work, you pay your bills, you go out every once in a while and have fun. While she was more the adventurous type, she wanted to constantly travel and she wanted to do all shit that we couldn't do. I couldn't afford to do it. And we just grew apart over the years. And it's the bottom line is it didn't work out, I think, mostly um, because of the, her age, the age difference. I think that's what it was, is that, you know, having that big amount of an age gap... At first, it was fun because we were dating. So she would come and visit me, and we'd spend some time. Every once in a while, I would go and visit her, and we'd go on these trips and stuff together, and it worked out nice. But then when we finally started living together, and we kind of realized maybe we weren't as compatible as we thought because we were such a, a big age gap, all right? Um, and that's the truth of the matter behind all of that, that bullshit that people make up, okay? All right, let's continue because I have a whole list here, all right? That's one of the things that people always fucking bring up, all right? Um, all right, let's be very clear about the very end of the relationship because people basically made shit up completely about that, saying someone dumped someone or did this or did that. First of all, what happened is none of anyone's fucking business. And the bottom line is that myself and my ex never disclosed that information. And we never will because it's none of anyone's fucking business. The truth of the matter behind everything that happened there. All right. But there was a weird situation because uh, we had already broken up in early 2017, all right? We had. We had already broken up. And when we had broken up, we didn't make it public because we didn't want drama. We knew if we made it public after being together for almost five years that it was going to cause monstrous drama and people were going to be all up in our shit and try, you know, keep in mind, over the years, I'd been swatted. 
our family members had been swatted. People who didn't even live with, with, with me and my ex had been swatted as a result of just being related to us. So we were like, there's no way that we could disclose that we're breaking up because they'll probably be trying to find out moving arrangements of where she's moving and all kinds of fucked up shit, okay? So we didn't announce when we broke up. We purposely didn't to keep it hidden because we didn't want people to be fucking around with our lives, all right? But there was one particular day when I was streaming. I believe I was doing like a podcast and I get a call, all right? The call is from my ex's job saying... Your ex, you know, had a medical issue and we need you to come pick her up. And I'm like, well, first of all, she's my ex. We don't go out anymore. So why am I getting this call? So apparently there was no one else. None of her friends wanted to help her or whatever. I don't know the deal. I don't know the truth of the matter behind the scenes at all. Okay. Uh, at that point, my ex was in the process of moving out of the house. Like she had some of her stuff out already and she was staying somewhere else temporarily, but she was kind of half in, half out at this time. So I was like, well, I, I guess I'll do the nice thing. I'll be the nice guy. I'll go and get her and figure out what the hell's going on. By the time that I had gotten to her job, I had to pay for an Uber and everything. By the time that I had gotten to her job, she was already at the hospital. So I took the car. because she. I was, by the way, I was still letting her drive my car to go, despite the fact that we were broken up. She was still driving my car. I was that nice of a guy. I go to the hospital to find out what the hell's actually going on, and I guess she had had a panic attack. Now, this is all public information. We talked about it two years ago. I'm not revealing anything that hasn't already been revealed, all right? Apparently, she had had a panic attack, and it was probably in regards to the fact that not only was she stressed out at work, but we had broken up other things. You know, all these factors had come into play. Um, and, you know, when I showed up, essentially what happened was nothing. We sat in a fucking room, a, a hospital room, for two and a half hours doing absolutely nothing. I said, is there a doctor fucking coming? Is there is there anyone coming? And every time I asked, I was br brushed off very rudely by hospital staff. Just go, go, go sit down. Someone's coming. So we sat there and waited for almost three hours, you know, waiting. Someone finally showed up and all they did was told, told basic information about if you're being stressed and if you're not feeling well, uh, you know, and you have a panic attack, you should talk to someone, maybe see a psychiatrist or, you know, all this kind of crazy shit like that. And basically, all, the only thing that happened was when, the, I guess, when the ambulance went to her job or whatever to pick her up, um, they'd given her some kind of a pill. I don't even know what it was. Was it, was it an antidepressant? Was it, um, I don't even know, because I'm not involved anymore. You know, I, she's my ex. I don't know any of the ins and outs of what the fuck's really going on, right? I don't know anything. But anyway, she was all zonked out because she had been given medication. So finally, after sitting in this hospital room for almost three hours, they tell you, you can go now. Gee, thanks. So but let me get this straight. You drove uh, an ambulance to her job. You gave her a single pill. You drove her to the hospital to have her sit in the room for three hours. And now I'm I'm driving her away. And you're probably going to charge her thousands of dollars for this too, right? Now, the thing is, again, we, we had been broken up and it wasn't publicly disclosed. So I couldn't tell all you guys that this was things that I was upset about because she was going to get billed for it. I knew she was going to get completely ripped off for this whole hospital stay. That's what I was angry about at the time, but I couldn't disclose that to you guys because I was talking about like, we, 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 like we're going to get billed. In reality, it's all on her. And you know, she has a job, she works at, you know, a job where I know it's going to be hard for her to pay thousands of dollars of bills for a hospital stay and shit. Okay. Um, so all that being said, all right, when I came back home, she was all zonked out or whatever. And she's like, ah, you're going to go on your stream now and tell everyone about the story, right? I was like, of course I am, as long as it's okay with you. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. So I did. I went, I came back, I did a stream where I explained exactly what I just told you guys. So basically the story ends and out. Only I had to spin it to not let you know that we were already broken up, okay? Um, and then it was actually over the course of the next week or two that she moved all her stuff out. And that was the end of our relationship. I, you know, that was it. And all I saw on the internet was slant Phil without permission, went online and disclosed a medical issue with his girlfriend slash fiance, because at the time we were, we were supposedly engaged even though we had broken up. People thought we were still engaged. Um, and gave all her medical history to everyone on the internet and then said that he's not giving permission for her to ever have an ambulance come and pick her up ever again, that from now on, no, no one should ever call the emergency line, but instead they should just hand her a pill and leave her alone. Like, what the fuck? Where did you get that from the story that I told? Like, that's not even close to what happened, all right? I was concerned that here's someone who I'm already broken up with. I went out of my way to help her. I didn't have to. She wasn't, we weren't together anymore. But I went out of my fucking way to go help her, all right? And 
I basically get slammed for having my concerns over her financial well-being because I know she's going to get a giant bill from the hospital when they didn't do anything. They literally didn't do a fucking thing for her besides hand her a pill at the store where she had her fucking panic attack. It's, it's preposterous. Now, the other thing is people saying, oh, well, you know, that's all well and good, but, you know, she, you, know uh, you didn't have permission to do that. Well, then why, literally why, when I was here on my stream talking about it publicly was she on her social media posting up don't worry everyone i'm okay there was a picture of her with her hospital bracelet on don't worry everyone i'm okay you know here to, because it was okay because there was always permission given but you, people are fucking assholes you know seriously they just make shit up they make shit up to perfectly hurt me all right to make to make this to make, make me look bad all right so yeah, that's the other thing. So, I'm, I, what I, just so you guys know, I have a list. I actually have a list of things that are common misconceptions that people slander about me. Demanded she never go to a hospital ever again. Instead, they just give her a pill and leave her where they found her. How could I have made that demand when we were broken up? I had no control over anything with her. Like I said, this was, we had talked about it on the way home, how preposterous it was that they, talk, took, they took her to the hospital, right? And now they're going to charge her thousands of dollars and they literally did nothing. A doctor didn't even come to fucking see her. A counselor came in the room instead. <laughs> Unreal. Like, you can't have a panic attack because of major medical issues. You could. But they didn't even bother checking. Anyway, um, that's just one of the things, alright? So, no, in regards to my ex, we're moving on from my ex now, thank God. She was never underage when I ever even spoke to her. She was always 18 or older. Yes, we were about 10 to 11 years apart in age. And yes, I do feel that that actually was an issue that in the long term, once we moved in together, we realized was an issue we didn't really know beforehand. Um, and we just weren't compatible because of it in the long term. No, I didn't ever disclose any medical information without permission. No, none of this shit ever happened. It's complete bullshit. Um, and the evidence has always been on the internet, but people don't want to look at the evidence. They just want to listen to the slander. Okay. All right. Now moving on. All right. Let's talk a little bit about Project 7, because I hate to tell you guys this, but I've already addressed this before. Project 7 was in, in the whole gamut of the time that I did stuff for YouTube. Project 7 was the one time when I said, I want to do something not by myself, but collaborate with other talented people. And I want to make a something that's not related to um, video games, not related to any kind of content like that whatsoever. Instead, what I want is to do a creative series. And so I teamed up with my then co-op partner, John Rambo, as well as our kind colleague he's sometimes a co-op partner but mostly we knew him from playing street fighter howard as well as teaming up with howard's friends one of which was his cousin um in a group called respect the pact and we made this show called project seven now it was a lot of work and a lot of time there's a lot of writing and drama and all kinds of stuff involved behind the scenes as always whenever you're doing a big creative project like this all right but for what i've heard is that people say to this day say, well, Phil scammed his his friends, or he ripped off his friends and never paid them for anything, and that's why they they hate him to this day. Bullshit. That's complete and utter fucking bullshit. All right. First of all, John Rambo. He and I had a long-standing work relationship outside of Project Seven, where was he would come and do the Smart Guys Wrestling Podcast with me once a week, and then we would do some kind of, of gameplay together, co-op gameplay, whether it was co-op commentary or co-op, you know, a game that was co-op, whatever it may be. I will now tell you guys, he was handsomely paid, handsomely paid for all of that stuff. When we first started, he got paid 50% of everything that we made money on. He made ha He got half of what I made. So every Saturday, John comes over. If we made a ridiculous amount of money on what we did that day, he got half, okay? That's just me being very transparent here. He always got half. I felt that was fair. Even though he could say, oh, well, Phil should make more because he's the YouTuber and he's the one who's putting the content up and doing the uploading work and he's the one who has the internet presence and all of that. I didn't care. I wanted him to get make half because I cared that much about him being being my friend and coming and doing this fun creative stuff together and I wanted him to financially have some help and stuff so I gave him half all right now sadly what ended up happening was later on with with my relationship with machinima my old YouTube partnership company they started refusing to even give me stats on how much money I was making on my videos that's how bad machinima got near the end they wouldn't even fucking come all right and say all right here's here's 
how much money you made this month on each video. They wouldn't even give me that data. They'd say it's not available anymore. So then what John and I did is we would say, okay, let's figure out together a fair amount of money for you to come do this every week because we can't figure out the actual half anymore. It's not even possible to figure it out. Instead, let's just say, okay, let's make an arrangement where every time you come visit and we do this co-op work together, I'll pay you this amount of money. And that's what we did probably for the last two years that we did co-op. We had to do it that way. So like the first two years, he was making half and the second two years, he was making a negotiated amount that he wanted. This was his idea, his amount that he wanted to make, okay? So there you go. In regards to that, and by the way, I don't think that anyone ever, I don't think that John ever publicly said anything like, I never paid him or anything. That's bullshit. Like, John himself never said that. He never said that Phil never paid me for the work. I think John was always upfront and honest. He never said how much, but he always was very honest about it, okay? Um, so I don't understand why people th to this day will say that I ripped off my friends and I didn't pay them. Now, in regards to Project 7, all right, which is the one thing that honestly, you know, didn't go right and people could say, okay, well, you know, people didn't get paid or whatever. Up front, we had meetings. Two of them, not one, two fucking meetings up front before we even started production of Project 7 on making money on it. And it was going to be that I was going to make the, the ad revenue on the videos, but we were going to try to sell the Project 7 t-shirts and whatever we sold, we would get an equal cut depending on who financed them and who financed them, me and Howard. We were the two people who financed them in the end. Um, cause we had to make those, those t-shirts up front before we could actually sell them. It wasn't like today on Teespring where you could just have them be made on the fly. Instead, back then that didn't even exist. There was nothing like Teespring. You had to make the t-shirts early, pay for them up front and then sell them. And we had plans to go to conventions and sell them and do all this stuff. Respect the pack didn't want any money at all. I had asked them up front, what do you guys want out of this? And they said, we want exposure. We want our channels on YouTube to get exposure as a result of working on the project with you. And then, I, then the one thing that we all collectively agreed on was that we were going to eventually, when we finished the series, make a DVD set and try to sell that and make big money on that because that could be a really cool collectible that viewers want is a, a DVD set where we could, you know, who knows what the production cost is, 10 bucks, we could sell it for 20 25 And then we would split all that amongst all of us as profit. And this would be, if it was successful, the first of future collaborations where we could do other projects and explode out there and do spinoffs and all kinds of stuff. And I was totally okay with that. All right. <clears throat> and that was all what our plans were up front. There was never discussion that people were going to get paid based on how the videos performed on YouTube. There was never discussion about how much money anyone's investing in the series. There was never discussion about anyone getting a paycheck out of it. Ever. That's, it never happened, okay? Um, now, I guess the one mistake that I made is I was the one who everything was on the line. I was the one with the YouTube channel that was big. I was the one who ultimately, if things went wrong, was going to get the flack for it, right? So what I probably should have done, and I'll tell you right now, if I ever do something like this again, I know to do it, is I will have a fucking contract drawn up, a legal contract, all right? By which, if I'm going to have a business arrangement in the future... I know everyone signs it and it's in writing, so these guys can't come back years later and make stuff up and say, oh, Phil never paid us and none of that. You never said you wanted money. We Our agreement was there was no payment to come. In fact, and this is the truth of the matter, people very, very much overestimated the amount of money that Project 7 ever made. If you look at the Project 7 videos themselves, I think the highest viewed one ever was like at, at that time like 180,000 views. In reality, I probably made $300 on that video. That's it. 180,000 views, you know, it doesn't equate to a lot of money. It's like 300 or 300 bucks on a video like that. Um, and so, so if you add it up, okay, Project 7 had four episodes plus a few trailers or whatever. What did I make? Like a thousand bucks on the whole thing? Well, guess what? I spent more money myself on Project 7 than I ever made because I bought all the prop guns, the replicas, those guns you saw in the videos that were hundreds of dollar props. I bought all those. I bought games and supplies and things. I was buying supplies for the shoot and everything. Like I was the one financing the whole thing. So I spent more money than I ever made on Project 7. There was no profit. It was not a profitable thing at all. In fact, it was a loss. The t-shirts that we had, all right, the t-shirts that we had bought to sell, we didn't sell half of them. So I spent more money on the t-shirts than I ever made. 
And the funny part about the whole thing is Howard apparently is, is so angry at me because we invested money in these shirts and he never got paid for the shirts. Dude, I still have half of them in the fucking house. We didn't sell them. If you don't sell it, there's no profit to fucking pay it off. I never got my money back for the shirts, so why should you? That was what you call a bad investment. We put money into something that didn't sell. The series got canceled because your friends in Respect the Pack decided not to continue with the series because they weren't getting the exposure that they wanted. So they had sour grapes about putting so much work into the series and not getting the exposure they wanted. Oops, we had already agreed with Phil that we weren't going to take any money, so they just quit, and then we couldn't sell shirts anymore. It's my fault, so now I'm supposed to give all Howard's money back that he invested into these shirts, even though I didn't make my money back, so I'm going to take not only a loss for the investment, but now I'm going to pay him his money back and lose a double investment? You see what I mean? It's in this is insanity, but this is how I guess these guys were thinking. They thought that Project 7 was going to be some giant cash cow that was going to get them rich and famous or something. I don't fucking know, but for anyone to come at me and say that I did anything dishonest when in reality I was the most upfront fucking guy possible in that whole situation. We purposely had meetings before we ever did a lick of work to make sure we were all on the same page about it. And as I've told you guys many times over the years, it was all passive aggressive shit. Respect the Pack never came out and was honest with me of why they quit the show. Howard over the years became more disgruntled and didn't really want to be in my content anymore and wouldn't really explain why. And it didn't come out until a video made randomly in 2015, a year after I had moved out of Connecticut, Oh, well, we want, you know, he never paid us and all this. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. I lived in Connecticut the whole fucking time. You couldn't come to me and talk to me and, and discuss it. You know what I mean? You know, instead, instead of that, it's stupid shit where they, they hold in all this resentment and anger towards me and then make a video about it you know, years later, when in reality, none of what they were saying was fucking true. It was their expectations of what was going to come out of the project, not actually what we had talked about and agreed to when we started work on the project, okay? So, no, ladies and gentlemen, there was never a time when, when I, where is it here? When I refused to pay friends for work that they did, no one ever asked me for payment on anything. Only used them to make money off of them. That never happened, Okay. Um, in fact, like I told you guys, I lost money on Project 7, and I paid John half of everything that we were making. So all these misconceptions about Project 7 and that kind of stuff is all lies. It is all fucking lies. All right? Um, oh, this is a good one. I gotta, I gotta talk about this one. Phil made money off of his dead friends. Okay? So you might say, well, how the hell could someone say that, and where would that come from? Okay? Well... Over the years, you know, I've been doing this for 11 years now, I have shows and podcasts where I do a variety of content, and I used to have a podcast where I would talk about a variety of topics. And there were two shows in particular, all right, where I talked about and did tributes to two friends of mine who had passed away. One of them was actually my very old rival in Street Fighter. His name was T. Carter, all right, and... I had grown up with this kid in the 1990s at the same video arcade. We played each other all the time. He was actually the person who started going to tournaments and actually got me into competitive Street Fighter because if it wasn't for him, I'll be very honest, I always didn't take it that seriously. He was the one who convinced me to take Street Fighter seriously and try to play it in tournaments and stuff. He was the one who got me into it. Um, so one episode of my podcast, I did a tribute segment to him because I had gone to a tournament and someone who had known him handed me all these beautiful pictures of him at a tournament that, that he had gone to. I was like, my God, I teared up. I was so happy. I was like, man, I miss this guy so much. And to get this, is so, it meant so much to me that this fan had given me these pictures. And I, I, you know, very heartfelt segment of a podcast that I had done was dedicated to the memory of T. Carter. I talked all about how he was always better than me at Street Fighter. All the stuff, you know, I'm not going to go into detail about it because that's not what this is about, but it was a very heartfelt thing. And then after the after I finished the podcast, people say, you're made money off your dead friend's memories. What? Now, that podcast was over two hours long and probably about a half an hour was the, the, the tribute to my friend T. There were many other topics and things discussed on the show. So you're telling me because there was a segment on the show that was a shout out to my, de my deceased friend that that means that I made money off of the, fr the my friend because it was a monetized video. So let me get this straight. Every show ever on television that has a tribute to someone who passed away, they're making money off of that because there's advertisements that run on that television show, right? 
I mean, God forbid someone ever do a tribute to anyone that's ever existed. If any penny of money is transacted anywhere, that means that you made money off a dead friend's memory. It's insane. Now, the other thing is, a similar thing happened a couple years later. My, my friend Scott Hovanissian, who was actually a friend of T's, he was the person who got T into competitive Street Fighter. He ended up passing away. Now, I didn't know too much about the circumstances of his passing or whatever. I had just gotten wind from a few people who had texted me and said, Phil, Scott passed away. It's really sad. So I decided on a podcast to do a very small segment where I discussed the passing of you know, him and saying, you know, rest in peace, and he was a good guy, and I told a couple jokes about things and stuff, that I, experiences that I had had with him. That wasn't even a long segment. I think, if I remember correctly, that was like 15 minutes, if, on, again, a two-plus-hour podcast. And again, the same slander. Phil made money off of his deceased friends. It's like, are you fucking... You've got to be brain-dead to think that that's the true thing. I didn't make a fucking single a, a video just about it and monetize the video. It was a small tribute in a large show to someone who went, meant something to me in my life. And because it was a monetized video, for some reason, I'm the fucking devil because I made money on a dead friend. It's insanity. It really is insanity, okay? All right. Let's continue. Um, I can't believe some of this shit. I really can't. Um, here's one that's new to me. I didn't even hear about this one until today. I groomed two fangirls and used them for sex and extra money. What? Like, I, what? What the fuck? I don't even know what that is. I don't know how you could even say that. Where is there any evidence of that? I mean, there's. I don't even know where that's coming from. I have no clue where the fuck that's coming from at all. Like, what? That's a first. And I didn't make that up. It's on the same fucking list here that I pulled right off of fucking Twitter today. That they people believe this. The thing is, uh, like I said, my life has always been very transparent, and it wasn't until like uh, you know when I started dating Cat that I made things more private. But you guys know how busy I am. You guys know how much I work. You guys see I'm on stream all the time. I'm making videos constantly. When the fuck was I secretly grooming two fangirls for these covert meetings and shit? Like what the fuck are you talking about? This shit is just out of control. All right. I mean, and of course that that would lead into. Phil said that he needed money um, for taxes and he used it to buy an escort from Europe to fly the escort multiple times across the world to spend time with him so he could pretend like he had a girlfriend and all that. And of course that thing was all debunked because that was proven that that was actually a, a, like a middle-aged couple over in fucking like, like, like Central Europe or some weird shit who had been catfishing people for like a decade doing this. And they were using other people's personas and online profiles and basically doing identity theft to pretend, pretend to be other people. And what they would end up doing is try to blackmail people. So I think what their game was is that eventually what they wanted to do to me by lying on the internet and saying that, oh, I'm an escort, that I was a fill or whatever. They were going to try to blackmail me and say, well, if you pay us a certain amount of money, we'll go away and never say this ever again. But I don't care about that shit. I already had so many people talking shit about me. I didn't care. And I just said, fuck you. And I ignored it. And it went away within two months when finally people did the research, you know, and found out that it was this crazy couple doing insane shit. Okay. But again, this is another thing that people still to this day say it. Phil had an escort. It's like, no, actually that one was 100% completely debunked, but people still believe it because they're fucking morons. Um, all right, let's continue here. I wanted to hit an 11-year-old girl. You're right. I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face. I cop up to that one. No! What the fuck are you talking about? This all spawned from two years ago. I was playing this stupid VR chat thing, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what it is, um, what it's supposed to be. And there was a girl on there who obviously should not have been playing VR chat unsupervised. You could tell she was probably like 11 years old, probably accurate. That's about how old she sounded. Why the fuck her parents are letting her play VR chat, the world of disgusting people going in there saying swears and sexual things and all kinds of fucked up stuff, right? Um, that's just crazy, right? But there was a girl who I walked into a room and literally just became an insane brat insulting me and saying nasty shit to me. I didn't even say a word. And she was saying like nasty shit direct to me. I was like, damn, you know. That girl needs a fucking smack or something. I don't even remember exactly what I said, but it was a reactionary thing, basically saying, you know, she needs she, her, she needs a smack because if that was me in my day when I was growing up and I was a kid, if I acted like that, my parents would smack me right in the head. 
that's just how it was back then. You know, today, God forbid anyone ever touch a kid, but back then that's how it was. You get disciplined for acting like a shithead to people. Um, you know, so I made a comment, off-the-cuff comment about that. It wasn't to the kid, by the way. It was a private comment. It wasn't like I ran up to the kid's face and insulted the kid. It was just to my streaming audience. I said, damn, you know, that girl deserves a smack for acting like that. And they twisted that into Phil wants to beat up an 11-year-old girl. What the fuck? Now, if I had actually said on stream I want to beat up an 11-year-old girl, do you think I'd be on Twitch today? Of course not. They would have banned me. But I didn't say that. It was an off-the-cuff comment. You're, you, it's stupidity. It's absolute stupidity, that pe things that people say and twist the shit into. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Okay. Let's get into more recent stuff, shall we? Let's get into all the crap that people are saying, you know, recently about things such as, um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, forget that. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. That wasn't interesting. Now, I thought it was something interesting to come in. It was nothing interesting at all. All right. Um, let's talk about recently. I mean, anyone who's been watching my stuff in the last two years knows that I'm financially not very good situation. You know, every, every time that it looks like I'm getting ahead somehow, um, sadly, I get screwed, all right? First, it was the YouTube ad apocalypse in early 2017 when YouTube ad revenue fell completely through because a bunch of advertisers left. So I changed myself up from being a full-time YouTuber to a full-time streamer. And I started to recover. Things were actually getting good. Then I get a, a, a message from the Washington State Department of Revenue that I was supposed to be paying state business taxes ever since I moved here in 2014 and I hadn't for three years. Oh, guess what? My accountant at the time screwed everything up and never did it right. So because of that, I owed thousands upon thousands of dollars of back state taxes that I never paid. It wasn't my fault. It was because the asshole who I was paying and trusted to do my taxes wasn't doing them right. So we get past that. And then the next thing is uh, YouTube. Uh, well, first of all, you know, losing a partnership that I had with Curse on YouTube, um, among, then losing monetization on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, which I didn't do anything. It was a Google Plus error. You know you know what I mean? It's like thing after thing after fucking thing. Every time that it looks like finally everything's in the clear, we, I can get ahead, something else would rear its ugly fucking head. But in particular, these last couple of years, there's been two things that have really been hurting me. One is those backstate taxes that I owed thousands upon thousands of dollars out of nowhere. I didn't have the money for them. And the other is right now my federal taxes, which I couldn't pay this last year, and I'm going on a payment plan um, in order to try to, to, to make up for it, okay? Now, I don't have anyone to appeal to. I don't have an extensively huge family who's made of money who I can ask for stuff. So for me, I'm really just, I'm, I'm dependent on fine, trying to figure shit out for myself. And I share this stuff with you guys. And I have to say, you guys have been so insanely supportive. Seriously, insanely supportive and just insanely cool about it. And helped me out so many times over the years with this shit that's happened. And I don't like sharing that kind of stuff with you. Because when you come to my streams, you're here to hang out and have fun. You're not here to hear this kind of shit, right? You don't want to hear about my financial woes and stuff. But being very honest with all of you, if it hadn't been for your support over and over, I wouldn't even be here anymore. I would have lost this house by now. I wouldn't be even be able to do this for a job. I probably would have had to declare bankruptcy and go get like a, a, a part-time job or two, three part-time jobs, you know, and, and give all this up. Um, so thank you for that. All right. But some of the biggest misconceptions about this is that when I ask for help, that I go and I blow money on stuff and... That's not the case at all. Everything that I've ever asked you guys for has gone exactly towards what I said it was going to be. All right. So the first first time around, we got to talk about this one because this one goes years back too. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Every statement in that is false. All right. Besides maybe my name. Stole... I didn't steal anything. What they're talking about is a Patreon goal level that was hit for one month in the summer of like 2015. Maybe it was 2016, but I'm almost positive it was as far back as 2015. Not stole. It was raised legitimately via a Patreon goal level. All right. Fan donations. They weren't fan donations. They were Patreon contributions. That's different. That went towards a Project 7 reboot. 
Wrong. It wasn't for a Project 7 reboot. It was for me to take some time out that month to do a Project 7 reboot trailer. Trailer. A trailer that was probably going to be 30 seconds long. Okay? So, for years I've been slandered being told that you stole money from your viewers for a Project 7 reboot and none of that statement is true at all. What really happened was, when I used to do Patreon more heavily, because I was more heavily into YouTube videos rather than streaming, I would have these goal levels set on Patreon. And so it would be like, if we raise 200 something dollars this month, I'll do this. If we raise $500 this month, I'll do this. If we raise $850, i will do this. And one of the goal levels that month was, I would take time away from doing gameplay for a while, probably maybe, you know, two, three nights a week to work on this Project 7 reboot trailer. And, excuse me, sorry about that, indigestion. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like a tier three goal, so we had already hit two goals below it. So it was probably something like, and I'm just, I have no idea if this is actually what it was at this point, so don't, please don't take this as a fact. I'm going to estimate it was like, the goal was from 450 to $800. So if we raised those 350 extra dollars, I would make the trailer. So essentially what you're saying is $350 raised to pay for my time that I'm not going to be making videos to make up for those lost videos because I raised it via Patreon. I'm going to work on a Project 7 trailer, okay? So essentially, that's what was supposed to happen. It didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen is because two reasons. Number one, because that summer, there was a lot of other stuff going on. And people actually knew there was a very busy gaming season coming up that fall with lots of hot new releases they wanted to see me play. But during the summer, there were other games that had been coming out that people wanted to see me play and complete before the fall season hit. And I actually publicly asked my viewers, do you guys want to see the Project 7 trailer that, you know, from Patreon, or you would rather see me do all this other stuff? And publicly, the consensus was, do the other stuff. We don't really care about the Project 7 trailer. All right, back then I used to struggle because every month I was struggling. I need two, three goals for Patreon. I would just pull shit out of my ass that sometimes people didn't really care about. And honestly, that Project 7 trailer was really one of them. In fact, I will be very honest with all of you. Okay. I'll be very honest with all of you. Out of all the people that I were, were big adamant fans of mine back then, there was one guy who was very upset with me. One guy was so upset with me, he said, I'm not going to watch your content anymore. You told us you were making a Project 7 trailer, and you didn't do it, and therefore, I'm not going to watch you ever again. I know who he is to this day. Alright? And that actually hurt me, because I was like, man, I let people down. There was someone who actually really cared about this trailer, and I let him down because he really wanted to see it. But outside of that, no one else cared. Alright? Now, what I did, I didn't just say, oh, here's 350 extra dollars, let me just pocket that. No, what I actually did is the next month on Patreon, I lowered all the Patreon goals by 350 bucks. I said... Instead of having a tier one goal at 250, we're just going to do a special goal just to start. And then the next goal will be like 150. The next goal is 400. So I lowered everything by 300, 350 bucks. Again, these are not correct numbers. These are just numbers I'm pulling out of my butt. I'm just giving you an example, okay? So that it would be fair for the next month. We were getting, People were still getting fun stuff. Now, of course, you're absolutely right. I didn't make the trailer. I 100% will tell you I didn't make the Project 7 trailer. I never made it. But... It was because my viewers at the time were telling me not to. That it was a bad goal. I should have never done it. I should have been doing other stuff. That's what they wanted to see me do. So I did what my viewership told me to do. And to this day, people still tell me I stole money and didn't do Project 7 again, even though none of that was promised. It was for a 30-second trailer. No money was stolen. And I actually gave it back kind of the next month via lowering all the goals. Now, the other thing is, all right, the other thing is that... um. Some people said, why didn't I just refund all the money? You can't. The reason being was, we, there's no way to tell who pledged on Patreon just to see Project 7. It's not like a, a crowdfunded, um, it's not like a GoFundMe. You know, when you go to a Kickstarter and you want to finance a campaign, oh, I paid you five bucks because I want to see you make a video game, right? That's not how it is. People give me Patreon money because just in general, some people just like the content I put out. Some people are actually directly pledging to get a perk level, a reward level. Some people want a goal to be hit. So they're all per pledging for different reasons. You can't specifically say, okay, well, I had a thousand people who pledged to my Patreon this month. Gee, I wonder how many actually pledged just to see the Project 7 reboot. How do I refund them specifically their money? You can't. It's impossible. It's just a stupid thing that kids would suggest is like, oh, see, Phil didn't refund any money. Therefore, that's why he stole the money. You can't refund the money, dumbass. But that's the thing. They'll say that stupid shit. 
just to make me look bad, okay? So the whole Project 7 thing was complete nonsense, all right? But in regards to the, the recent things that have happened with me raising tax funds, there were two specific times, all right, when I needed to raise tax funds. Once was in the fall slash late 2017 because I needed to pay a state tax payment by the end of 2017, and then I had to pay a bunch of money in 2018 for state taxes, okay? I announced this dilemma of mine in November of 2017 on my Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day podcast. I did a Thanksgiving Day special podcast, and I announced this problem to my viewing audience on Thanksgiving Day 2017. You can go back and watch it. It's still live over on my vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs, all right? Now, during 2017 was the year when early in the year I broke up with my ex and I started talking to and then dating my now wife, Kat, okay? Now, Kat didn't live around here and she had to visit me a couple times. I had to take time away from streaming and stuff to spend time with her. I didn't disclose that that was happening because I knew if I did, people would be trying to get up in our private shit, all right? But what people say to this day, Phil raised all that money for the taxes so he could secretly fly his new girlfriend across the country to spend time with him. Now let's look at the timeline. Hmm. Well, the first time that Kat came to visit me was the summer of 2017. The second time she came to visit me was the fall, which I believe was October of 2017, because she actually helped me pick out my Halloween costume for the Halloween special that I did that year. I announced my financial dilemma about the state taxes in Thanksgiving of 2017. So obviously what Phil did is he announced it so he could raise funds, go back in time, and pay for the two visits beforehand. You fucking dumbasses. You you talk out of your fucking asses about this stuff and make the most crazy, controversial, insane theories that make no fucking sense. It's such a weird conspiracy. Like how the fuck do you think that money that I talked about and raised later in the year paid for the trips that happened earlier, you fucking buffoons? It just doesn't make any sense. Now, the bottom line is this. If I had raised money for... Well, no, I, I said that wrong. The truth of the matter was that if I didn't raise enough money to get out of this state tax situation, I didn't know how I was going to pay the state taxes. And because of that, I was afraid the state would either put a lien on my home or I didn't know how much it was going to be that I owed the state at that point. And I was thinking tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. I had no idea. And I was thinking I might have to sell my house. All right. So I actually told Kat at that point, I don't even know if we can plan our next trip. I don't know when's the next time I can see you. You know, this really sucks because I obviously, I, you know, at that point we had been dating for months. I spent a lot of time with her. And we were, it was working out. We wanted to advance to the next stage of our relationship. And we couldn't because I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen with all these taxes and everything. I had no clue what was going to happen with taxes and all that stuff. Um, so our life was on hold. Now, thank God, hallelujah, you know, and I'm so grateful that you guys and gals and fans helped me out and raised enough money so that I paid off the state taxes. I was able to handle it. And because of that, Kat was able to move in with me in early 2018. But if I didn't raise the money to pay off those state taxes, I probably would have said our, our relationship's kind of on hold until we figure this stuff out. Oh shit, you guys are right. Where's my wedding ring? I was in the shower and I didn't put it back on. Now I feel really bad. You guys, you you know what? If you guys ever see me without my wedding ring on, you call me out on it because that's supposed to be on my fucking finger all the time. And now I feel really bad because I left it in the bathroom. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get it right now. <laughs> Okay. That's my fault, man. <sighs> New husband making mistakes. Sorry about that, cat. And I feel real bad about that. But, uh, you know, they, I took it off. Because the thing is, people ask me, you know, when do you keep your wedding ring on? Only, the only time I take this off is when I'm in the shower. Because I'm afraid it's going to slip off my finger and go down the drain or something. But it's always with me at other times. And now I'm looking, like, oh, God, I didn't have it on. I actually, my, my heart, I was like, oh, fuck, I feel like a dick. So thank you to whoever found that and called me out on that. I got to have that on, man. All right. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Uh, continuing on here. Um. So yeah, 
it's insanity that people say that I lied about taxes to raise money to fly Kat out here to spend time with me. She flew out here to visit me before I ever even announced my tax problems. There's no fucking way that could have ever happened. And the timeline is there. You can see that when the video came out and when I started talking about her and everything, revealing stuff about her, it's horseshit. It doesn't make any sense what people are saying. They're out of their minds, okay? Now, of course, the, the latest controversy was I had this issue with my federal taxes and I, um, uh, you know, I told you guys I needed help and I did a couple marathon streams to raise money with the federal taxes and you guys, between you guys helping me and my parents helping me, I raised enough money to qualify for this uh, this payment plan for the taxes that I didn't pay in the last year, and that's in process right now, okay? That's all in process. It's happening right now. I'm actually supposed to get a notice from the IRS this month of, of actual physical letter, supposedly, saying blah, 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 whatever about it. I'm supposed to give that to my tax guy. He's already talking to the IRS, and he's going to get me on this tax plan, all right? So I qualified for it, thank God. Um, but now, you know, then, incidentally... When all that was going on, already I had been in, in the works and talks with my parents to go visit them because my parents are very elderly at this point. You know, I don't say very elderly. They're not very elderly. They're in their 60s, but they, each of them has different health problems. My dad has problems with his back and his heart, and my mom has numerous problems with, you know, going on over the years. Um, <clears throat> and they're basically at the time of their lives when they don't know what's going to happen. At any day, they could take a turn for the worse, and it could be, that's it. So they want, no, knowing that I was living with Kat for a year and we were engaged and that, you know, we were in love with each other. They wanted us to go out there to meet them. You know, Kat, they wanted Kat to meet them and spend time with them and us to have almost like a, a, a couple days to ourselves away from all the stress of work or whatever. Because the thing is, I, I talk to my parents every single week. Every weekend, I call my parents and I talk to them and I tell them all about myself and what's going on with my life and everything. So they're always in the know about everything that's going on with me, 100%. They laugh at all the shit that people say and do about me slanderously because they know it's all bullshit. Um... But they paid for everything. They paid for the trip out there. They paid for the room and board. You know, they paid for the car we had. They paid for all of the food and everything that we ate when we were out there. They gave us spending money for being out there. They helped pay for all the supplies. And then, of course, the big thing was we got married while we were out there. But it was a very small ceremony. It was held inside my parents' house. It was only a few close relatives and a dinner. There was no formal real ceremony. With no, no money was really spent at all on the ceremony. And literally the only money I spent on the wedding at all was on a new belt, a pair of shoes, and a tie. The suit that I have is 10 years old, and that's the suit I wore, okay? Um, everything else my parents paid for because they wanted to meet Kat. They wanted us to get married. They wanted us to spend time with them. They wanted all these nice things to happen before, God forbid, something happened to them and we wouldn't be able to spend any kind of meaningful time with them, okay? So... All that being said, all right, um, I raised funds for these federal taxes before the trip out there, all right, and all of a sudden, it's Phil took all that money for the taxes and he spent it on his wedding, all right. I just want you to think how stupid this sounds. The week before, the week before I flew to Connecticut to get married and spend time with my parents, I raised money to pay for the wedding. On what fucking planet... Do you think that you pay for a wedding the day that it happens? I mean... <laughs> it really just gets me. Like, huh? Like, weddings are paid for months in advance. They take tons of, of arrangement and planning. Uh, if you're going to get a, 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 you know, a wedding hall or you're going to pay for anything, everything has to be done up front early, early. You know, that's, it's, it's insane that these people just think that like Phil had a tax, a fake tax crisis and immediately spent the money to pay for his trip to Connecticut. So the plane tickets I bought the night before, apparently, it's just stupid. It doesn't make any sense. The things that they say, but this is what I mean. Like, so now all the things that I've addressed, I'm just going to read them again. Are you guys ready? Threw his fiance under the bus and turned her private medical issue into a drama stream. Didn't happen. Demanded she never go to a hospital again and said that they give her a pill and leave her where they found her. Didn't happen. Um, lied about money issues for a year. Not stop begging for cash while flying a girl out uh, to see him. Didn't happen. Used tax donations to, to move the woman in with him. Didn't happen. Used tax donations to marry the woman. Didn't happen. 
Stole fan donations that went towards the Project 7 reboot. Didn't happen. Refused to pay friends for the work they did. Only used to make money and, and you only used them to make money and make more off of dead friends until he lost them all. Didn't happen. Uh, wants to hit an 11 year old girl. Didn't happen. Um, groomed two fangirls and used them for sex and extra money. Oh. Didn't happen. But the one that I really didn't say yet. This is the one that gets that gets me the most. Everyone's a paid shill tweet. Okay? Apparently, last year I put out a tweet that said everyone's a paid shill. That's not what happened. What happened was, I, I'll, be, I'll tell you the full story. You guys ready for this? So, Kat and I had a week where we wanted to do some fun stuff together. But we knew that we couldn't really afford to do much. All right. And what we decided to do is called a staycation where you take some time away from your work to kind of stay at home and do stuff around the house. All right. And we had some plans as projects we wanted to do around the house. One of the things we wanted to do, I'm, I'm revealing this for the first time ever, was go to the Space Needle. We live in a suburb of Seattle. And we wanted to drive in to Seattle for one day and do some touristy things in Seattle and then come home. I didn't disclose any of this to all any of you because I was afraid if I did, you'd have assholes trying to fuck with us. Try to show up at the Space Needle or do stupid shit. Who knows, right? Um, so this was last year. This was 2018. There was a, a week when we had all these plans to do all these things together. And it was going to be a fun time. Um... <clears throat> It was going to be a really fun time, uh, hopefully. Or at the very least, it was going to be a time when we got to spend time together. What ended up happening was, she got sick. All right? So we ended up doing a few things, but she ended up getting sick. The whole week was a disaster. This was supposed to be our week where we spend time together and do fun, meaningful stuff as a new couple living together, you know, because we lived we, at that point, we'd only lived together for a few months, I think. And it was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. She got sick, and we couldn't do anything because she was just awful sick. And here I am feeling fucking miserable. And I'm like, this sucks. We had planned this for a while. I knew. I was like, this is it. I know I can't take any more time off of work after this to do anything. So it was just a really terrible time where it's like we're supposed to be spending time. Instead, I'm sitting here with my with my girlfriend who's miserable as hell. And it sucked. And I was really agitated. All right. And when this happened, I was contacted by a few fans who were like, Phil, are you aware that people are playing State of Decay 2 and we whole week early on Twitch? And, you know, you go to their streams and people are actually tossing them thousands of dollars on these streams for them, you know, because basically they're showing off these games early. And I'm like, it really rubbed me the wrong way. All right. And I put out a tweet that was really stupid, that was worded incorrectly, that if you just read it for what it was, it said something that was not what I was meaning to say. All right. What I wanted to say was I 100% disagree with the practice of game publishers and developers putting out video games where they put them out early for special influencers. A person gets a week, a, whole, a week, a person gets a game a whole week early and gets to play it on Twitch exclusively. Not only are they making money to do it because it's a special sponsored stream, but now their viewers are so happy because they get to see a game early, they throw them thousands of dollars extra. All right? It's bullshit. It's a very bad practice, especially because in particular, there was a certain person playing State of Decay 2 early who was told by the company... You may not give your opinion on the game because there's a review embargo until the middle of the week. So in the middle of the week, then you can begin to give your opinions. You could play the game early, but you're not allowed to actually give any criticism of the game while you play it until the middle of the week. So it's a paid advertisement then. That's exactly what it is. You can't criticize the game. It's a paid advertisement. All right. <clears throat> now, I personally hate this practice. Hate this practice. I think it's horrible. I think it's uh, uh, this whole influencer idea is ruining the gaming industry because you're getting people who, number one, are spoiling the game weeks early, who, number two, are telling you a game is good or at least showing a game and, like, I'm not allowed to say anything bad, so it makes it look good. So you'll go buy the game when, in reality, that game is not good. State of Decay 2 was one of the worst games of last year, my opinion. That's my opinion. It was. It was inferior to the first game. It was poorly made. It was full of bugs. It was just a piece of garbage. And it was a ripoff. But people probably ran out and bought it based on a few people who got that game early, all right, and played it on Twitch, made a ton of bank on it, on a you know for a bad game, and people ran out and bought it based on the hype that they generated, which is unfair. It's 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 not 
legitimate gameplay. It's it's a paid advertisement. It's being a shill. It is being a shill for a company. Okay. Now, later on last year, I was able to play Assassin's Creed Origins. Excuse me, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, as a, as a sponsored stream on Twitch. Here's the difference between what I did and what I criticized. I was able to be fair with the game. I was told you can criticize the game fairly when you're playing it. You can give your opinions on it. You can be honest about what you're experiencing in-game. And I was. I didn't pull any punches when I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I told the, the honest truth. The game is too much of a grind. There's too much side content. It's too long and drawn out. It could be much faster paced and better. I was honest during my entire playthrough of that game. So I was able to do an honest stream of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I didn't play the game early. And I made a little bit of extra money on it. That's far different from a sponsored influencer who's playing a game a week early. The only person who has access to that game and gets to play it early makes thousands of dollars from their viewers plus thousands of dollars from a fucking game publisher slash marketer. I completely disagree with that practice. It's dishonest and it's hurtful to the consumer who now is artificially getting hype and, and, and excited for a game that maybe necessarily they wouldn't have even played just because they got to see their favorite streamer play it early and they weren't allowed to criticize it. So basically all you think is that the game is good. All right, so <clears throat> I disagree with that, but the tweet I put out was completely wrong. The tweet that I put out said something like, everyone who's playing State of Decay 2 early right now is a paid shill, and you shouldn't support their content. You should wait for people who are going to play it legit when it comes out on Friday. By saying it that way, not only did I insult a whole group of people who I didn't mean to criticize game journalists who had been playing it early to legitimately put out game reviews later in the week, but I also made myself look like a tremendous ass because I didn't elaborate on the topic and everyone legitimately destroyed me during this week when I was supposed to be off from doing anything game related because I was pissed off at a situation at home. I made a stupid tweet. And you know what? I'll 100% fess up to it. 100%. That's on me. I fucked up. That was a mistake that I made for sure. Out of all the things that we just listed, that actually happened. I fucked up. I made a bad tweet. It was dumb, and I apologize for it, and I hopefully won't do stupid shit like that again because it was just so dumb. I, I It was a completely misworded tweet that had nothing to do with the actual idea that I was trying to portray, okay? All right, everyone. To end this special, all right, I want to end with the hot topic, the topic that the tweet itself that went viral and all the big content creators are talking about the tweet where basically it's my incident. All right. It's my incident where in 20, uh, wow. In 2016, I accidentally showed something on stream. I didn't mean to show. All right. And for the first time ever, I can disclose to you what really happened, um, behind the scenes. And why it happened and how dumb it was. I mean, I'm a complete bonehead for doing it. I've already fessed up to doing it a million times. The bottom line was at that point in my relationship with my ex, things were not going well. Things were starting to fall apart at the seams. There was a lot of behind the scenes stress. And we were not getting along at all. It was to the point where like we were living together as roommates. But there was no love there anymore. It was kind of just like we're going through the motions to say that we're together, but we weren't really doing anything that was anything fun or interesting together. And we really, a lot of the things that we had loved to do weren't fun anymore. Um, you know what I mean? What happened? Why is everyone doing words, words, words? What words did I use? Uh-oh, did I say something stupid? What did I say? Let's, before I continue, let's see what people say here. What? What is going on? <laughs> oh, I, it's nothing I said. People put the chat into emotes only mode. Oh, I thought that I had said something bad. And people were saying, watch your words, use your words. I was like, oh shit, okay. I thought I had said something like horrible. <laughs> chat was in emotes only mode. Okay. Thank you, guy. I, whew, that was close. I thought I had made a big mistake. <laughs> I was like, oh great. All right, let's try again. So, at that point in my relationship, it was like around mid-2016, things were not going well, all right? So, I was depressed. I'll be honest. I've told you guys before publicly about my depression, that I suffered from depression. I was depressed, um, and it was a time when there was no intimacy to speak of whatsoever, and I was an idiot. I was a complete idiot, and I did something really stupid 
behind the scenes I shouldn't have done? Why the hell? Of all the time, not to say that there's anything wrong with someone doing doing that in their own private space. Why the fuck was I doing it when a pre-stream was running, right? When I had a fucking things running here at the beginning of the stream. It's stupid as fuck, all right? It was the dumb, one of the dumbest... I had to be the dumbest thing I've ever done. I mean, seriously. The dumbest thing I've ever fucking done. It had to have been. Um, but that being said, all right? That being said, um, the things that people say about it to this day are wrong. Now, this happened, first of all, three three years ago. It was early May of 2016. People still say it was like last year, the year before. It was three years ago. Three years ago, but people still bring it up like it was yesterday. They always will. I'll be 90 years old and they'll say, oh, remember that? I know, I know. I'm never going to live it down. What are you going to do? But the things that they say about it are such complete horseshit misconceptions that I can't... First of all, Phil planned it. What? Phil planned it. Phil intentionally did that. On what world do you think that there would be any benefit from me planning out something like that and purposely doing it. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? What what benefit would there have been to me planning out and doing something like that intentionally? I mean, think about the insane risk involved. I could have lost my livelihood. I could have lost my ability to stream on, you, on Twitch and, and YouTube and make YouTube videos. I could have lost... Why would I have planned something like this? I just, I don't understand um, at all, at all, how anyone could say that, all right? No, it was a complete legitimate accident. That's number one. Number two, some people say, oh, well, you know, Phil did it. He masturbated in front of thousands of children. What? First of all, when do I have thousands of children on my stream ever? Never. When do I have thousands of people on my stream? Never. When? What the fuck are you talking about? This happened during a pre-stream, which is the, the intro that I run before I actually put out the actual content that I'm streaming. So this happened within the first you know, 15 minutes before I started talking. The mic was muted. There wasn't showing the screen a gameplay. It wasn't supposed to be showing me on the screen. Duh. That's why it was an accident. Um, I, essentially, if I remember correctly, it was probably about 70 people top. 70 who were actually on the stream. And most people weren't paying attention to the stream because they were just chatting amongst themselves in the stream chat because it was just playing this PS4 dashboard music while the pre-stream was going. Um, So how on earth... I masturbated in front of thousands of children. Where the fuck did that come from? It was 70 people who were early to stream and probably two of them accidentally looked up at their screen and said, what the fuck is that? And then, you know, their lives were changed forever. But, you know what I mean? Um, That just doesn't make any sense. Um, Some people claim that, like, I'm an exhibitionist and this is something that I always used to do behind the scenes and I, you know... It's just nuts. It's just fucking nuts, the things that people say. But in reality, I was, I was in a bad time in my life. I was depressed, and I was not having a good relationship with the person who I was with at the time. Um, we didn't really see any way out of the situation we were in, and it was painful. And I had a really dumb moment of fucking weakness, and an, an accident happened. The camera was on, but the mic was muted, all right? And you saw nothing but from here up, all you saw was my head. That was it. Um, it was very embarrassing, but there was not thousands of children watching. It was about 70 people who even had the stream on at the time. But the thing is that people record everything that I do hoping for that moment. They're hoping for that moment of weakness. They're hoping for that thing that he can twist or turn into something bad. So they, well, oh my God, we got our jackpot, right? I've been re, re recording everything Phil's done for the past seven years. I finally got my moment. Where now I could turn this into an internet meme. And it did. That's exactly what happened. It turned into an internet meme. It exploded. And for the past three years, I never lived it down. I doubt I ever will. Um, but no. Phil did not masturbate um, in front of thousands of children. Okay? This is not... Uh, this never happened. This is a ridiculous nonsense. And <laughs> I just find it ludicrous that people still say that kind of stuff. Okay? All right? Um, at this point, 
that's about I what I have. And I've you know I've been now going on for about ninety minutes. Like I said, I there are many many other things that have been said to me said about me over the years. Um, and the truth is that, like I said, a lot of them back in the day when it used to be about gameplay or whatever would be based off of a snippet of truth here or there. But the things that I've just talked about are the major things that people always say, and they're all false. They're literally every one of them is a lie. And if any of the, one of these is the reasons why you don't like Dark Side Phil, you have been basing your negativity towards me on lies that were spun so people could get attention and clickbait for their videos and clickbait for their streams. And none of it was ever true or based on reality, and you, you fell for it, you know? Um, and it sucks, because it's one thing. If it's just going to be a meme, that's a joke. It's another thing if it slanders and hurts someone's reputation. But a lot of people don't realize this. I've been around since 2008. I've been making videos since before most major content creators today. And I've still lasted this long with all the nasty slander and shit that's been said about me. Which is why, you know, when something happens, like what just happened with you-know-who on, uh, uh, on Twitter and everything... Um, to see me kind of get my comeuppance on someone was like, oh my god, this guy, like, he's, he, he lasted that long and he comes back out of nowhere, right? Um, so that's the deal. Now, some people want me to field questions from the stream chat. The bottom line is this, I could do that, but I'm, first of all, I'm not going to be here all night. And the second thing is, I've already told you guys what's off limits. I'm not going to talk any more about my ex and I'm not talking about Cat. I can't. This is stuff that's personal shit. And it's not mine to talk about when it comes to that kind of shit. And the bottom line is a lot of the stuff that people say has nothing to do with me anyway. Like they're pulling up personal shit about my wife from years and years ago. It has nothing to do with anything present. And it's fucked up that people would even care to look it up and or talk about it on my content because it has nothing to do with us right now. Okay? So, what I will do, and I apologize guys because there's absolutely no way that I'm going to read all these shout outs. But I am going to uh, just say in general, thank you to the following people. Okay? Get ready, because this is going to be a lot of people. An anonymous gifter who gives it a sub to Soda Poppin, the Lightning God, Hodor Targ, Targ, Tog, Ho Hodor Targ, Slaunt, an anonymous gifter, another anonymous gifter, another, another anonymous gifter, J Salt for a $10 tip, Airman T. Freddy B. Mackin for the cheer. Knox for the dollar tip. Ponage 101 for the $7 tip. We smooch our homies here for a $5.50 tip. King of Golf HD who gifted a sub. Pro Jared apparently tipped me $5. Yeah, fucking right. Jim apparently tipped me $5. Eternal Napalm had done, had done a 50-bit cheer. Tokido Bison had done a 95-bit cheer. Murazath had subscribed to the channel. It's Worf has resubscribed for six months. Tokido Bison had cheered again. Big Boy Abides cheered. And then... I tipped myself $5 tonight, apparently. Pretty impressive that I could do that. All right, here's a, here's a, a legit question. Someone tipped me a dollar and asked, did I get Almighty Tevin kicked off of Twitch TV? No. I wholeheartedly will 100% tell you to your face, look into the camera as I say it as well, in case someone said, oh, Phil wasn't looking into the camera. I didn't get Tevin banned from Twitch. I had nothing to do with it at all. Zero. I didn't even know about it until after the fact people came into my chat and told me. What happened is he pissed off people. Like he, when you do stuff that not only negatively affects me, but affects other people, you piss off the wrong people, man. And you got to understand that like people will eventually hold you accountable for shit that you've done. And he is the kind of guy that thinks that everything's fair game and he can bring up shit about, you know, my relatives and shit about other people like my moderators and my viewers and he thinks that it's all funny, and it's not. It's fucked up that you would bring in personal shit like that. And I get the feeling that he rubbed the wrong person the wrong way, and they wrote Twitch management and said, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Did you watch five minutes of his stream to see what the fuck he's doing? And they got him shit canned, all right? I had nothing to do with it at all. I don't know if that's really the case. That's my speculation, but I have no truth um, about any of that, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, Tokido Bison had cheered again. He says, was it Tevin's fault? I don't know. I'm assuming it was something he did. I wasn't me, though. So, I, okay. Someone just tried to do a, uh, a Endgame spoiler. Avengers Endgame spoiler. I closely, I didn't read it, thank God. So, but the thing is, Avengers Endgame, it already was officially said, the producer said spoilers are now allowed on the internet because the movie's been out for two weeks. So, even if I had read that, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Third Eye the Third tipped me five bucks. Uzi did a 50-bit cheer. And Spawn Killer tipped me a dollar. Um, 
He says, did you know that there's people on YouTube who know how much money you make on tier, ch- cheers and tips? That's crazy. Well, here's what they think they know. They think they know, but what they don't understand is that there's processing fees for everything. So even though you see a certain amount of cheers coming in or a certain amount of tips coming in, that's not actually what I make. That's just the face value of what you see. And also there's always things that go on behind the scenes. You know, people trying to charge shit back and the like. And so, you know, I'm sure there's people who literally will sit there and with a calculator because they got nothing to do all day. And they go, dick, 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 dick. you know, that's, that's how they are, right? Um, let's see. Uh, Mark tipped me $3. He says, would you like to spend an eternity, eternity among the stars? I have no idea... What an esoteric question. Thanks for the tip. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, that never happened either. So, so Dark tipped me a dollar. He says, can you debunk uh, people saying that you leaked your ex-girlfriend's nude pictures on a, uh, on a video? That never happened. What happened was there was a picture of my ex-girlfriend. It wasn't a picture. It was a thumbnail. A thumbnail of a picture, I think. Now, by the way, this is from like, again, this is, you know, 2012, 2013, something like that, 100 years ago. And there was a little thumbnail somewhere on my desktop or, you know, no, it was in a folder. And I had been recording a video doing something else and apparently the thumbnail popped up. It wasn't a nude at all. It wasn't a nude at all. There's nothing nude whatsoever in the picture. It was a thumbnail and it was not a nude. But it was her like posing with her arm like this. So people assumed that it was a nude and started saying, oh, it's a nude, it's a nude. It wasn't a nude. If it was a nude, I wouldn't be on YouTube. I would have been banned from YouTube, stupid. <laughs> an anonymous cheer did 111-bit cheer. Thank you. Um, thank you, Baseball, for a 50-bit cheer. He says, why do you think PewDiePie hates you so much? I don't know, and I don't care. Frog's playing golf, cheered. <laughs> he wants me to talk about more about Tevin and Tevin using ViewBots. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Blue for, for 2188 subscribe for 18 months. Thank you very much for that, okay? <clears throat> oh, I don't know anything about that, Madara is God. He's saying something about... Bad bunny being a banned term? Nope. The only thing is, Tevin is not a banned term. People keep saying that I make these words, like words that people get banned for in the stream chat. I don't do that. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. People just make shit up. They make shit up out of nowhere to try to create drama. And it's not me. I don't even know what the fuck people are talking about half the time. I don't. There you go. Big Boy Abides cheered. He said, I had a line on Twitter. It was funny because someone had tweeted in response to, some, to my, my tweets on Twitter this week. And they said, you know, Phil's wrong a lot, but he's probably right two out of five times. And when he's right those two out of five times, he's actually like dead on right about stuff. And this is one of the times that he's right. And I responded, damn, you know, being right two out of five times is probably better than most world leaders. <laughs> it's true. So there you go. Um, Let's see. Hodor Tar cheered. He says, it's 5.50 5 a.m. here. I've been hitting Bombay Gin watching your stream. What a great combo. Relax a bit. You don't have to be so worried. I'm seeing as he's the thing. I'm not worried. I felt doing this special would actually be able to clear the air with a lot of people and or at least give you the honest answers about things that have been said about me for seven years. And now, honestly, I feel better. I do. Like, those misconceptions, you can still believe them if you want. But now you've got the true story of everything that was going on in these situations. So... It's it's up to you to choose to believe or not, but you have the you have the truth and you have the evidence to do with it what you will. Okay. <clears throat> um. That's oh, that's also false, King of Hypocrisy. That's not true at all, and I'm not gonna go into massive detail about it because it's been beaten to death with a, like a dead horse. Two Bar King did a hundred bit cheer. Thank you, and Blue for twenty one eighty eight also did a five hundred bit cheer. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Golden Cole says Twitter trolls always say you're an alcoholic address that and debunk um no I'm not an alcoholic uh back in the day so we're talking my early days of YouTube as I've admitted to you guys I used to drink way too much um I don't do that anymore I had to do it for my health like for my health I had to stop doing that kind of unhealthy shit drinking all the time eating terrible foods like red meat and stuff I couldn't do that stuff I couldn't because if I had done that stuff I would have had horrendous health problems um so yeah, every once in a while, I'll I'll go out and I'll have a drink. You know, this week I think this week I had two drinks. Yeah, this week I had two drinks. 
Oh my god, he's drinking gin. No, actually, this week, I think one of them was a rum and coke, and one of them was a vodka and um, grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice. And I'll have a, you know, and I haven't been, I never drink alone. I'm always, I'm with Kat. We, if we're, if I drink, we usually have a drink together and we watch something together or we, you know, we're doing something together. That's the truth. Now, I'll be honest, back in the day when I used to be just a YouTuber, I wasn't live streaming and stuff. I drank too much all the time. I was like way crazy drinking. You guys know, you saw the videos from back then. I'd be drinking all fucking night, playing video games, destroying entire towns in Fallout 3 and doing stupid shit, right? You heard the slur in my voice. You know how drunk I was. You know, back in those original YouTube days. But I don't do that stuff anymore. Um. Then someone asked me, can you debunk dr being drunk? Yeah, there you go. Hydrocarbon asked, have you ever been recognized in person? Um. Only a few times. You know, since I lived out here a few times. Um. When I lived in Connecticut, it was more often. You know, but what I would say is... I've never met someone who's rude to me, which is very nice. Anyone who ever has recognized me has always been very gracious and nice to me, and that's a good thing. So. Oh. Oh. Did you guys hear that? That was my neck. A little stiff. Whew. All right. Uh, you know, at this point, um, at this point, I guess that's it, and it's hilarious because, you know, the trolls are so angry. The people who have really gone out of their way to wake my life a living hell the last seven years are so angry right now because I am having some positivity thrown at me on the internet because of the tweets that I made in the past couple of days. Um, and they hate that. Any ca Oh my God, could any that anyone would see Phil in a positive light is like the worst possible thing, okay? They're so angry. So it's funny, I'm making this special tonight to clear the air about a lot of things. And they're saying in the stream chat right now, okay, um... And saying, you didn't prove any anything tonight. Where's the concrete evidence? What evidence do you want? Uh, my ex's birthday was always public knowledge. You could have looked it up anywhere and, and known um, all about it. You could have known all the fuck about it. it it's, it's always been public knowledge. I've told you about the behind the scenes stuff years ago. The thing is just people don't believe me. So they make up their own shit. It's like there's never... Uh, in what situations... Do you take pictures of every possible thing that happened? Do you write down, like I said, Project 7, we didn't have any contracts in place. There's no way you could prove or disprove any of it. So you can literally make shit up. And how do I disprove it? Like, for example, right now someone could say something ludicrous. Like, Phil raped someone three months ago. And if it was a day that I was off from streaming, how could I prove that I didn't do it? I couldn't, right? All I could say is, no, I didn't do it. But how do you expect me to fucking prove the opposite? I can't. You have to be logical humans and realize for yourselves that you have to have a little ounce of, of just fucking intelligence and maturity in your heads to realize that if all this shit has been said about Phil or all these years, yet Phil's still here, he's still on YouTube, he's still on Twitch, he's never been, you know, banned or anything from any of these places, and he's not arrested for shit, and, you know, he's got a loving wife, why would any of these things have happened if these horrendous things that people say about me were fucking true? And the bottom line is they're not. It's people making shit up to get clickbait on their own shit. And you fell for it. If you believe any of that shit, you are gullible. You fell for something with no evidence. Pure speculation. Because there couldn't have been evidence of something that's not true. And you bought it. Herc, line, and sinker. And you're the one who created the problem with these people who literally just say whatever they want. And you will, you know, if you're that gullible, I don't know what else to say, man. Like, what, you know, it's insanity. It's absolute insanity that you would believe shit with no evidence. All the things we talked about tonight, there was never a slick of actual concrete evidence for any of it. Yet people talk about these things as if they are the God's honest truth about me. That they've been proven time and time again to be true. And like I said, this, this actual picture I'm bringing up is an actual fucking picture I screen grab off of Twitter. All right, you can't see it because you're trying to capture my phone screen. You'll never see it. It's an actual screen. This is what people are passing around Twitter right now, responding to people saying nice things about me on Twitter. Well, here's all the negative things about Phil. That's what I just de I just debunked on stream here for you. But this is what they do. And be, oh, well, this is facts about Phil. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. No, none of that is true at all, but they pass it around as if it is. <laughs> so you see what I mean? Like, there, what defense do you have besides just coming out and saying, no, this is not correct, Okay. <clears throat> um. Alright, well anyway Final shout outs tonight 
Um, I got anonymous dollar tip. Electrum guy cheered. Spawn killer tipped me a dollar. Um, a lol a lol cow tipped me a dollar. That, this doesn't even make sense. Lol cow tipped me a dollar. Can you clear up how people said you scammed your fans by not playing Super Mario Sunshine? I did play Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> Debunked. You can find it on my YouTube channel right now. There you go. Samson also tipped me a dollar. Yeah, I did hear that a former WCW wrestler, Silver King, passed away in a match. That's very sad. Um, K Styles resell for 30 months. Asking about if I'm going to play Persona 5 of the Royal. Probably not. <clears throat> Let's see here. Don't give subs. Did 100 bit cheers. What were your views on spoilers on Twitter right after the movie comes out? I don't even know what you're talking about. And it's the guy tipped me a dollar said, I'm watching your Twitch. Real talk. <laughs> it's the guy on his Twitter. All right. Madara is God. So can you clear up for trolls who think you're abusing your mods because of swag and spreading lies? Uh, Madara is God. Wouldn't you be the person to clear that up? You're one of my mods. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. That whole situation, everyone knows the truth about the situation, is that Swaggins uh, went nuts when he told me something incorrect during my Resident Evil 2 playthrough. It was blatantly worded incorrectly in the stream chat. And he tried to defend himself staunchly when in reality everyone watching the stream was I was watching as I read it word for word and it made no sense what he said. I did what he said didn't work. He had worded it wrong. And he was so angry that I would call him out on the stream that he had a grudge against me ever since then. And the whole time I played Sekiro, he was on my ass ragging me saying that I sucked at the game and how dare I criticize the game. It's me because I suck and yada, yada, yada to the point where he got angry and he, will, and he left. And that's all it was. He had a bug up his ass because he got called out on stream for doing something wrong blatantly it was black and white he had done something wrong and he didn't like that he felt that over the years that he had been a moderator and the, the fact that he had supported me financially that i guess i should have given him a pass or whatever and he i guess he wanted some kind of special treatment because of it and he was very upset about it and he decided to leave. There was literally nothing on my end. I had no problems with the guy. I never had uh, uh, anything wrong to say about him. I, he left of his own accord. He told me to demod him. It was all on his side. Every negative thing is on his side, not mine. And if he ever came back and we talked or whatever, I guess I'd probably say, you know, say, by, let bygones be bygones. But I heard that he's gone off and just talked endless shit about me on all the wrong places, as you know. Which is what people do when they feel that, you know, oh no... My time with DSP is done. Let me jump to the other side to get a cheap pop from the other side, right? It's exactly what they always fucking do, so. It is what it is. Who cares? Nick Ba did a 300-bit cheer. says, this truly is the Redemption Run arc. And Uzi just cheers. said, any statements on former mods? Johnosaurus Rex or Kigalian? I don't know. Johnosaurus Rex um, used to be a mod and just basically couldn't mod anymore, so we demodded him. Kay Galleon was the person who I mentioned in this video who was upset that I didn't make the Project 7 trailer. That's it. He was upset I didn't make the Project 7 trailer and he said, I'm not going to watch your stuff anymore. And that was the end of our relationship. So there you go. <clears throat> to... All right. Well, guys, I think I've talked long enough. Um... I've had enough. <laughs> I got it off my chest. I do feel better. I hope that this cleared up a lot of misconceptions for a lot of people that they've had for over the years. Um, you've got your answers. Again, um, it's on you guys to believe me or not. And I know there's many people who won't and there's many people who will. And that's okay. It is what it is. You know, you can judge for yourself. But the bottom line is, for as much as you say, well, there's no evidence, Phil, of what you said... Well, guess what? There's no evidence of any of the shit that these people say about me because it's not true. They will never show you a concrete lick of evidence because they can't because it doesn't exist. You know what I mean? If they did, they would show it and then that would be it. If definitively I had done the horrible things, I would have been banned from YouTube, banned from Twitch, banned from Twitter, banned from the internet, banned from the earth, banned from the Milky Way, launched off into a black hole, shot across, you know, the old plane of existence and had all my molecules ripped apart at the seams because how could someone so horrible as me even be allowed to exist in this plane of existence, right? You see what I mean? But none of that ever happened because it's all bullshit on my behalf and my expense so they can get clickbait and you fell for it if you believed any of that stuff and it sucks if you did you know i can't blame you for it especially now that there's so much stuff that goes on negative about me 
uh, in the last seven years that people just believe it is fact, but the bottom line is none of it is true. A lot of it's based on snippets of fact or things here or there, but none of it is true. And no one will ever show you evidence otherwise because it ain't true. Okay? Thank you, Blue, for 2188, who actually did a $25 tip. Thank you very much for that. That's the biggest tip I know we had tonight. Excuse me. And an anonymous cheerer also did a 100-bit cheer. Thank you very much. User case says, debunk the rumor of me making $20,000 a month. <laughs> even I'll, I'll, even at the height of my YouTube popularity, which was the year of 2012, all right? It was actually the second half of 2011, and I say the first three months, or the first three quarters of 2012. That was the height. I mean, most views coming in and everything. I didn't make $20,000 a month. Never. Never in my YouTube career have I made $20,000 a month. It's insanity. It's just stupid shit. People talking out of their asses. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay? <clears throat> All right, guys. Um, so that is it. That is it. Thank you, guys. Just remember, Scoopula just made a very good point. He says, no evidence at all will, ever needs to be shown because you don't prove your innocence. Um, you have to prove that someone's guilty. And that's right. In the American court system, you may not live in the United States, but in the American court system, you are innocent until proven guilty. The things people say about me, most of them are not true. Out of all the things that we talked about today... Number one, absolutely, I made bad jokes about Nazis back in the day, and I wholeheartedly apologize. I will never do that again. Yes, I had an accident on stream. It was really stupid. That will never happen again. And yes, um, I made a bad tweet last year that was worded incorrectly about shills, people being shills for playing State of Decay 2, and I'm working actively to not do stupid shit like that on Twitter ever again. But outside of those three things we just talked about, none of the other shit that's said about me has been true. And that's what I mean. So there's three times Phil had really bad things he did. Um, let's turn that into, use that as justification that everything else was true, even though there's no evidence of it because we made it all up. So there you go. Okay. The Whopper says, can you debunk Sekiro being the greatest game ever? If you watch my playthrough, you've already seen that one to be debunked. All right. Uh, that is it, guys. Thank you for watching, whether you watch live on stream or you watch this on YouTube. I hope that it, it uh, served a purpose. Thanks to everyone who was supportive tonight. And now we get back to normal business. Because now I feel good. I got this off my chest and out of my system. And the truth of the matter is, I've already talked about this stuff before. I never just did it together. You know what I mean? Like, I've talked about all this stuff over the years before and given my full explanations. But I've never all in one place kind of summarized it for one video that people can find all this crap. So now you hear those common drama things about Phil. Come watch this video to get your answers. And that's that. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.